Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Player Spotlight here on Steelers.com. We're joined today by Ramon Foster. Ramon, Ramon, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. A lot of people may or may not be aware that uh, in addition to being an outstanding offensive lineman, Ramon Foster has an eye for talent. Pretty much every year at the end of uh, mandatory veteran minicamp for the last couple of years, I've gone to Ramon and asked him who are the off the radar guys that kind of catch his eye. and. He came up with Mike Hilton a couple of years ago, yeah. but he didn't know his name. Yeah, he, said, <laughs> he said number 40 is good. <laughs> Last year, you were talking up Jalen Samuels. Yeah. That looks like that was a good call. That so was. I know we're only halfway through OTAs, but who's on the short list right now for getting your seal of approval? I'm, I'm going with a couple of linemen this year. Um, Fred, the kid from Florida, is a guy that I got my eye on. Also, uh, Brumfield. He's an undrafted guy out of LSU. Uh, both of them, one, first and foremost, all of our young guys, are mentally, they have it way better than we did as far as learning the playbook. But as far as them being able to bring it to the field, too, those two guys have kind of really stuck out to me. So we're not going to give them the official check yet. Not they're, yet, because they're in my group. They're, they're tracking. They're, and they're both undrafted, too, which is kind of cool. So I, of course, have an eye for those type of guys right now. And how about some of the more high-profile guys? There have been some uh, significant additions. Yeah. What are you seeing from those guys? Devin and you can tell he was first round for a reason. The guy moves flawlessly, man. He's a guy that, that knows what he's doing. And you can tell our defensive coordinators, our defensive coaches, and some of the older guys are kind of pushing him also to get it down. And he's doing a really good job at it. He, you can tell he's like a sponge, man. I'm excited to see him. And also our third round, what is the second or third round receiver? He has some tools. And there was a comparison out there to a guy that came in a year after me that are, they're like, he's really looking at Vance. He has an opportunity. Uh, Deontay, right? Deontay Johnson. Yes, Deontay Johnson. He's You're another curve I, I'm learning names already. <laughs> but he's a guy that I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. And, and just go back a year, uh, from go back to last year, uh, James Washington. You can tell the difference in him this year. I'm excited for that kid. Very excited for him. Specifically, what are you seeing? He looks, we saw him light it yeah, up out here last year. We did, but he, he lit it up on, on just raw talent. Now he's fully thinking about it. You, you see his, his, his technique come into it. Uh, he's he's got to be one of the highest, quickest jumpers I've ever seen. And he just has a, a sense of calm over him. And that's what it took for me. It was about a year before I actually got comfortable. And he looks like he's getting comfortable with what he's doing. Vance McDonald, your tight end, was, was speaking this week about chemistry on offense, mm -hmm. and, and he acknowledged uh, Antonio Brown and said there was obvious chemistry with Ben. Absolutely. And you got to see how that's going to play out this yeah. year. You had a Dante Moncrief, you had a Deontay yeah. Johnson, it, maybe a Benny Snell, some, some moving parts yeah. on offense. Talk about, if you can, how that chemistry process will evolve with, with new guys coming in. This is where it starts, but the the, uh, the common factor in all of that is Ben Seven. He's a guy that, I saw a, a quote that said, or Dante said, he's a guy to throw. I want, I want to play for a guy that throws, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to throw those guys, get on the same page, so he's going to talk to you. You already see him on the field coaching and talking to guys, making sure that they know what they're doing, and it, it, it's something that's developed. What he had with A.B. is definitely a very unique, special thing, and you can tell that he's finding his guys now. You know, maybe it's not just one guy. It's, it's moving around to different groups, and uh, Switzer was actually joking around. was like, he's asking, well, why aren't we running this protection? I want to get on the field, too. Joking around with us because everybody wants their hand in the pot and, and having a seven has guys that want to get the job done I, I think that's uh, it's gonna be in our favor yeah. and as you see that evolve Ben with Johnson yes. Ben with Moncrief it, it kind of yes. bleeds into the group right it does. and then one day you wake up and like hey we got it we we're good and, and that's the thing about it we're, we're, we're gonna miss Antonio because he's a special guy we love that guy we love everything about him but of course you know at some point things end and we move on and we got to find a new thing there'll be another 73 here at some point you know and that's just how it goes you evolve and him being a, a savvy future Hall of Famer that he is he's going to find a way to make sure he's productive with his guys Ramon, another thing that has uh, resonated with me we're about halfway through these sessions now, actually exactly halfway through, and your guy Alejandro Villanueva last week said, he talked about the change in uh, attitude, atmosphere, vibe, whatever you want to call it. He said, this is by far the most amount of positive change that I've seen. Now, he wouldn't elaborate, but do you feel any different? And if so, what are you feeling? You just see a bunch of guys that have their eyes open to everything around them more, more than anything. And that's, that's being positive about what we have to do. Um, it's been fun. It's been, it's definitely been a change for us in a sense, but guys are locked into it. You know, guys are aware of what's going on, what has happened, but guys are, are, are closer 
we talk more, we, we engage more. The Even just out here, the, the way we work is a little bit different too, and that's a positive thing. And last thing for you, Ramon, uh, do you notice anything different relative to the Steelers not having been a playoff team a year ago? Um, Joe, Joe Hayden's talked about feeling like an underdog, and in th Hayden's theory is you guys can use that to your advantage. Absolutely, and, and not in a sense of bad advantage, but in a sense that we know what's expected here. From the time I got here as a rookie, it was Super Bowl or bust. That's all it's been, is you either making a Super Bowl or it's not a failure. Coach T always tells us at the end of the year, there's only one game we're striving for, and that's the Super Bowl. That's because that's our mentality. So to not make the playoffs when we've had, when we had the opportunity to, um, that's a shame on us. And I, I think it's a sense of urgency to make sure uh, we get into that dance again. And, and not a, a fourth issue, it's just that, hey, we have to handle our business. And that's uh, what it comes down to is, it's a game, but the business part of it comes first. Well, Ramon, appreciate the time. We will uh, check back at the end of it, mandatory veteran mini camp, and we'll find out if the guys you've identified are still the guys yeah. or if there's a dark horse or two uh, getting into prominence on the way to Latrobe. Thanks for the time, Ramon. No problem. Thanks.